Today will be a relatively comprehensive look at the Z9's autofocus and I also have a little issue with the combination here and I would like to ask you guys, is it normal? I'm Richard, welcome to ZP Productions. Today we'll talk about the Z9 autofocus and a little issue I'm facing. So let me talk about the issue first because that's a short one. Uh, when I'm using the 7200 with the Z9 and I'm on normal image stabilization, I did notice that when you are half pressing, it does activate the image stabilization. It stabilizes the image. But when you full press, for some reason, I think the kick VR kicks in and then it just shifts the frame. You can see the shifting in this video here. Is it normal? When I test it out with another sample set, another 7200, in the shop, it seems to exhibit the exact same behavior. The question is, is it my Z9? Is it this combination? Or is there some way to prevent it? I did notice that in sports image stabilization, it is less obvious, but it still jumps. This can be quite distracting at times. I just want to confirm. By the way, this is done handheld, trying to aim a subject, and then it just jumps in the video here. And that's really about it for my issue. <laughs> By the way, the image stabilization still works. I will not be talking about image stabilization today, but it still works. The 7200 still works perfectly well. Autofocus, sharp, accurate. It's just jumping every time I press the shutter down. So now let's talk about autofocus proper. And to summarize everything, if you don't want to go through my entire video of explanation and looking at various subjects, the Z9 autofocus is pretty good. Uh, in fact, the number of missed shots, I would say it's no worse than what I experienced on the R3 and the A1. If you have seen my other video where I talk about R3 autofocus, it misses about one to two shots with every 30 shots. And the Z9 seems to exhibit very similar behavior, missing one shot in every 20 shots. In fact, let me show you the numbers here. So in today's test, I have done a lot of shots. In fact, well, before I show you the numbers, let me show you all the shots I have done in a short little clip. You can see so many shots are done and it's a variety of things. Firstly, it is normal humans spinning around. There's a portrait followed by cyclists, followed by motorcyclists, and then followed by cars going straight towards us, sideways of us, a few varieties. The only thing I don't have is wildlife and I don't own a dog, so... I can't test with a dog or a wildlife and I don't earn a birding lens. I mean, uh, unless somebody's going to sponsor me 100 to 400, it ain't going to happen. So today's result is based on whatever you've seen just now. And, you know, I poured through 408 shots in total, shot with these two lens. Uh, 100 plus shots was done with the 85 and 300 shots, about 290 shots was done with the 70 to 200. And these are the results. Firstly, in terms of total number of usable shots, is 383. When I mean usable means it's either tech sharp or just slightly soft that, you know, if you sharpen a little bit, it will get you there. That is the definition of usable to me. Uh, while soft means that even sharpening cannot save and the only way to use them is when you zoom out. And that is about 3.9% or about 16 shots out of these 400 over shots. And then lastly, our focus means I wouldn't even use it if I'm zooming out, it's just blur. So that is about nine shots. And let me break down to the individual lens because there is some difference. Now for the individual lens, the 85 millimeters um, actually scored slightly lower in terms of usable shots. You can see that it is 74.57, tech sharp, five stars is tech sharp shots, and 17.79 in terms of usable sharp enough shots means it's slightly soft, but you can sharpen it up. 21 of them. Now, I have done way lesser shots, of course, on the 85 because it's such a short lens. On the 7200, I got 80.3% of tech sharp shots. And then I got 14.1% of slightly softer shots. Now, if you notice in this particular comparison, notice that there was nine totally blur shots for the 7200 versions. And in fact, if you look at the previous one in the totality, there is a total of nine totally unusable shots in all my sequences. So what happened to that nine shots, right? You'll be probably wondering, huh, nine shots only, and it's all done by the 7200, there must be some issues, right? The 7200 is getting a lot more sharper shots. In this particular situation, let me show you here. I have no idea why is it not focusing properly. I have used uh, tracking onto that guy on the motorcycle, and there was another guy on the motorcycle just behind him, I think. And I think it threw the Z9 crazy. It doesn't know whether to focus on the guy in the front or focus on the guy in the back. And I can show you this sequence, you know, it's like getting out of focus and not regaining the focus for whatever reason. So that's where all the nine out of focus shots came from. And it's only in that situation it happened. 
there was no other situation where uh, the camera failed to focus, except for the other one. But th to be fair, I removed those because that one was a pole blocking the subject. It was going past a pole, so I had to remove that whole sequence. Uh, it's just a pole blocking, and the pole was this big in front of the frame, so there was no way that the camera can focus behind. So I removed those sequence. But if not, there was no other sequence where the subject is totally out of focus. They will at most be quite soft that you can use when you zoom out. But in this particular sequence, I have no idea what's happening, really. Once again, let me show you. This particular sequence, I have no idea what's happening. Don't know, is it because there's two cyclists back to back, one in front, one behind, and it just goes out of focus. Yeah. But if not, uh, the other sequence were quite good. I can show you the cyclist sequence. He cycled towards me. It's usually sharp. I can show you another cyclist sequence using the 85 meters. Cycle towards me, sharp. I can show you a sequence where the subject walked towards me and spin. And it's also sharp. So even the car sequence like this car sequence here, the car is running towards me. It's also sharp. So on general, I feel that the Z9 is actually very capable when it comes to shooting at subjects moving towards you and out to the side of the frame should not have much problem here. I did notice that as you go further and further off center, you tend to miss a little bit more. In fact, let me show you this sequence here where the subject is about maybe, uh, I believe at that point in time, she, he's about like four meters away from me and but at the side of the frame. Um, he tends to be soft throughout the entire last sequence. And that is using the 85 millimeters, of course. So. The 85 millimeters seems to be slightly weaker than the 7200, and plus it's at the side of the frame, probably that's the reason why it missed. So overall, um, what's my takeaway is that the Z9 is a very capable camera when it comes to autofocus. And after this test, I don't think there's any doubt in me anymore that uh, if you can't catch the shot, it's probably your fault. <laughs> oh, but there is one sequence I want to show you, which is quite interesting. So there was this car that was just uh, about maybe 50 cm or one meter behind a fence. So I was focusing on the car as it's running sideways towards it. It's a red car. I did notice that the Z9 is smart enough with the 7200 to focus on the car and not on the fence. And you can notice that the fence is actually slightly soft as the car moves across. So overall, I'm actually very impressed with it. I mean, uh, most other autofocus system may or may not catch the car. They may just focus on the fence. Um, I'm not too sure. Maybe I need to test with the other two flagship cameras to see such a behavior. That, is it normal or not? Um, I'm pretty sure that some cameras will definitely catch on the fence itself. But for the Z9, it seems to lock onto the car and the car as it moves across behind the fence, which is like a meter away, it still focuses nicely on the car itself. And that is probably the result that you want. Overall, I'm very happy with the Z9's autofocus and um, this is pretty much all I have to share for today. I think it's a relatively comprehensive look. Once again, let's look at the result. 408 shots, 93.87% sharp enough shots, usable, which means either tech sharp or sharp enough. We have 3.9% soft shots, which means probably only usable if you zoom out. And there's just only 2.2% that is totally unusable. Oh, 408 shots is quite an uh, impressive number, if you ask me. And that's why for today. I hope you enjoy my short little look at the Z9's autofocus. And I hope that it is useful for you. Because for me, it's an experiment to just understand the reliability. Because unlike the other cameras, the Sony has proven itself through many iterations. The Canon has really proven itself in the R5 days. And the R3 seems to be even more reliable. And it has also less megapixels. So its tendency to have tech sharp shots seems to be higher. But the miss rate seems to be about the same. At least this camera and R3 seems to be about the same, about 5%. I did notice. You know, when I was doing my RC car test, the R3, as I said, click on the link here, looks about the same. So overall, I think the Z9 is quite reliable. And if you are intending to buy the Z9, I think the autofocus won't let you down as long as you are using faster lenses because there is a difference, a 5% difference between this and this when it comes to tech sharp shots. And I hope you enjoy this. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.